Hello everybody and welcome to another episode of the N64 Japanese Eye. As always, this is the series where we take a look at Japanese exclusive N64 titles and try to answer the simple question, can you play and enjoy them without knowing any Japanese whatsoever? Now in this series so far we've covered a broad range of games, but quite unusually we haven't covered any games made by Nintendo yet. So for today's episode we have one of those very games, a game made by Nintendo but never released here in the West. This is going to be Bass Number 1. This is a brand new game so the box is in excellent condition. In case you didn't already know, Japanese N64 games were never sealed. The box art is bright, however I think for a Japanese box this is quite understated compared to some of the more recent games that we've covered. Inside the box you have the carton manual as well as a quick control guide fold out which are a staple of Japanese N64 games. The usual warning flies are included and on the back of the quick control guide is a map which will help you learn the game's lakes and areas. The manual is full colour and due to the game also supporting the fishing rod controller there are pages upon pages of controls and details about how to play the game. It really is a shame that I can't read Japanese as this looks like a manual you're really going to have to read to get the most out of this game. So whilst the game's intro rolls let me fill you in on the game. Its full translated title is Shigesato Itoi's number one bass fishing. The game was a debut at Space World 2000 and according to Nintendo the engine is leaps and bounds ahead of anything else on the market at that time. In fact Nintendo was bold to say that the game was built from the ground up and created from the fundamentals of bass fishing and none of the falseness of video games. Players would be free to explore each of the lakes and choose where they want to cast off from rather than having set spots or locations. If you're a Super Nintendo fan, then you'll likely be aware that this game is indeed the follow-up to that console's game of the same name. I say follow-up because this is actually classed as the definitive version of that game. So rather than being a sequel of sorts, it's actually the same game but updated to take advantage of the new features of the N64. And if you are an N64 fan, then it may surprise you to know that the Rumble Pack was inspired by bass fishing, as a way of replicating the twitch from the line and jerk of reeling in a fish. Upon starting the game you are given a rundown of the basics of the game and given some basic gear to get you started. You are then free to roam around the lakeside in search of the perfect spot to cast off. Whilst roaming around you will come across some of the game's other characters who are 2D sprites and offer words of wisdom and advice. There are also other buildings to enter such as the shop where you can go spend the money that you've earned from your catches and upgrade your gear to really go after the big fish in the lake or fish deeper into the murky depth. There are also the vehicle shop where you'll have to hire boats so that you can cast off in the middle of lakes or reach hard to find spots with some great fish to catch. Graphically the game has gone for a super realistic look. It's a shame however that the same physics seen in Wave Race are nowhere to be seen here. The water does look good but I would have loved to have seen how laboratories get the same incredible look of the water which had been seen years earlier. I also think that the 2D sprite characters you meet seem very out of place in the game. With everything going for a super realistic look including the buildings, scenery and fish they just seem to have no place in the game. This was however due to the popularity of the characters from the Super Nintendo release so it's a bit of a nod to fans of the original. Also in a cool twist you actually play the game in a first person mode and this is because you are taking control of Shigesato Itoi himself. In terms of controls when using the standard N64 controller with a rumble pack it does add a nice sense of fishing and it can be no match however though for using the real N64 fishing controller. Sadly I don't have one of those but my experiences with the rod on the Dreamcast makes me feel that this would be a very similar effect in terms of gameplay. And when you finally do get a bite the two window gameplay really comes into its own. In the smaller screen you can see the fish battle taking place and before it bites you can slowly twitch the lure to make it irresistible. As you reel in the fish you'll need to pay attention to the main screen and also keep an eye on your line's tension as you'll reel too hard and then your line will snap and break and the fish will be just another one that got away. The game itself is easy to pick up and play and the music is your usual high quality Nintendo fare and personally I think it sounds very similar to many other HAL Lab games like Kirby 64 at times. The music also picks up when you're reeling in a fish which helps add to the tension. Yeah, no pun intended. With the game being quite slow to begin with, the music actually has a soothing effect. On one hand it draws you into the laid back style of gameplay, 
but on the other hand, it can quickly make you feel bored and lose interest, especially when you go a long time without bites, which is quite a common occurrence when you first start the game. It really is quite a strange game. On the one hand, you can play it without knowing much Japanese, and you can just about work your way through the game, catching fish, selling them and upgrading your gear. However, you'll be missing out a whole lot of the game's other characters, as they try to help you, and without knowing Japanese, you can miss vital pieces of information, which will have otherwise led you to make some big catches. For many N64 owners, people playing in the fishing lake on Ocarina of Time will be all they need in a fishing game, but for those looking with some more depth, then this would make an awesome game to buy. It's just sadly one which I can't recommend unless you can at least understand some basic Japanese, as much of the game will be lost on you. In terms of a collecting point of view, then this is a fairly easy game to pick up. Even complete in box brand new, you shouldn't be paying more than $30 for this, and you can find it even less in various parts of the world, including here in Europe. So what do you make of this game? Has it piqued your interest, and has this stood out for you amongst the other fishing games on the console? Or are you disappointed from what you've seen that this game never came out here in the West? Or do you think Nintendo would have been better off bringing a Mario fishing game to the West due to their sports game popularity? As always, let me know your thoughts in the comments down below, and thanks again to everyone who's been sending me Japanese N64 games to review in upcoming episodes. You are really what makes this series such a blast to make. Thanks for watching, and until next time.